Is LK99 a physics breakthrough or just hyperbolic hype? This mysterious material is making big claims about room temperature superconductivity, but can it back them up? Today, we reveal the inside scoop on LK99. We'll talk about the researchers behind it, analyze their questionable data, and explore replication attempts by pros and amateurs alike. Early results are pouring in, but major questions remain unanswered. Does LK99 represent the future of physics, or is it a case study in sensationalism obscuring science? From drama in the lab to theories and experiments, we tackle it all. But first, let's discover the story of the researchers behind the LK99 discovery, which is quite an intriguing one. The lead authors are Hun Tak Kim and Suk Bai Lee, who previously worked together under the guidance of late Professor Tong Shik Choi at Korea University. Choi passed away in 2017, but before his death, he expressed hope that his students would find the high temperature superconductor his theoretical work predicted. Kim went on to a battery materials company, while Lee founded a startup called QCenter. After Choi's passing, they reunited at QCenter to continue his research legacy and fulfill his dream. Driven by admiration for their late mentor and a promise made, Kim and Lee worked for years trying to synthesize the copper-doped lead compound that Choi's theory suggested could superconduct at room temperature. The results of this quest were the controversial LK99 papers published in 2023 under Kim and Lee's names. The 99 inches in LK99 refers to 1999 when Choi first proposed the idea for this unconventional superconductor material. Though the research has drawn extensive criticism, Kim and Lee's devotion to honouring their professor's vision is central to the LK99 origin story. However, there is also controversy around how the LK99 research was released. Two separate preprint papers were uploaded to ArcSieg by the authors in July 2023. The first listed three authors, Kim Lee and a researcher named Kang. But shortly after, a longer six-author preprint was uploaded without the knowledge of Kim Lee and Kang. One of the other researchers had published the expanded preprint alone without permission. Kim publicly expressed frustration that this version contained many defects and was uploaded prematurely. This rogue preprint helped kick off the viral interest in LK99 before Kim could address issues with the data and analysis. The unauthorized preprint fueled speculation and media hype by coming out before the research was ready. This controversy exemplifies the importance of proper scientific communication and peer review. Unvetted preprints should not be taken as established facts, and breaching research integrity for potential fame undermines the collaborative process that yields quality science. A deeper analysis of the two preprints also raises concerns about vague language and resistance measurements. The papers make claims about LK99 exhibiting zero resistance, the hallmark of superconductivity. But the data graphs are imprecise and do not definitively demonstrate perfect conduction with no losses. There is also no evidence of the specific heat anomaly expected when a material transitions into a superconducting state. The resistance results in show fluctuations, noise, and a gradual decline more characteristic of a plain good conductor, not an ideal superconductor dropping instantly to zero. So while resistance decreases, the language of zero resistance seems inflated. The measurements lack the precision and sharp transition needed to convincingly prove superconductivity. This vagueness erodes confidence in the reported findings and underscores the urgent need for independent verification. With extraordinary claims like room temperature superconductivity, independent verification is absolutely crucial. Reproducing experiments is a fundamental tenet of the scientific method. LK99 cannot be considered legitimate until other labs can replicate the results. This prevents issues like bias, errors, and even misconduct from leading the community astray. While the original researchers believe in their findings, science is not a matter of belief. Their claims do not become facts until experimentally confirmed by unrelated groups with no vested interests. This expectation of independent validation disciplines researchers to conduct rigorous, transparent science it also allows for checking biases, identifying mistakes, and ruling out statistical flukes. Direct replication is simply the best filter we have for distilling truth. This is why the physics community awaits third-party verification before accepting LK99 as the real deal. But what do you guys think of this? Let us know in the comments. Additionally, in the absence of definitive verification, some amateur scientists and YouTubers are even attempting to replicate LK99 themselves at home. The materials to synthesize it are relatively accessible, making garage superconductor hunting a viral pursuit. 
While commendable in spirit, these well-meaning efforts are unlikely to yield real insights. Superconductivity is notoriously tricky to produce and characterise correctly. Even experts with cutting-edge equipment have trouble getting reproducible results. So DIY attempts, though enthusiastic, should be viewed more as fun than science. Until research powerhouses can replicate LK99 conclusively, it may be beyond the reach of home setups. In the physics community, scepticism prevails based on the data published so far. Multiple physicists interviewed say LK99 is unlikely to be an actual room temperature superconductor, given the materials and methods used. They point to inconsistencies with known superconductors and the lack of expected signals in the resistance measurements. Respected voices like Dr Grosvenor of Oxford emphasise that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And prominent materials, scientists argue that starting from a ceramic mineral, rather than a metal, makes achieving superconductivity highly improbable. While these experts acknowledge the possibility remains, they assign a low likelihood based on current evidence. Their perspectives highlight the need for truly bulletproof data before accepting such paradigm-shifting claims at face value. A key reason physicists doubt LK99 is flaws in how resistance was measured. One scientist compared it to metals which are extremely good conductors, but not perfect superconductors. So LK99 may be a new conductive material, but the resistance data is unconvincing regarding superconductivity. More precise, unambiguous resistance measurements over a range of temperatures are needed to substantiate such groundbreaking claims. Additionally, amateur replication attempts could inadvertently harm the science. These well-meaning efforts lack the expert technique and rigour to reliably reproduce such sensitive research. Failed replications due to improper methods could falsely seem to invalidate the claims, even if LK99 does work under optimised lab conditions. The materials must be exceptionally pure, measurements precise, and trials tightly controlled, challenging for non-experts. While admirable to try at home, results could confuse more than clarify. Caution is urged. Even if proven superconducting, LK99's composition may limit applications. Most used superconductors are flexible metals that can be deposited as wiring and coatings. But LK99 is a rigid ceramic mineral. This could restrict use. Ceramics cannot be drawn into wires to replace copper cables. Superconducting wiring may require adapting the material or bonding it to metallic substrates. Additionally, many uses rely on strong magnetic fields, but the non-metallic nature may give LK99 poorer field properties. Its brittleness and inflexibility also hamper practical use. While still valuable for research, LK99's mineral composition may inhibit widespread utilisation should superconductivity be confirmed. Other debunked superconductor claims provide valuable lessons. We must demand solid proof before radically rewriting physics. Preprints and media hype are no substitute for rigour, transparency and independent verification, and claims require investigating thoroughly, not just cheering initially. If LK99 pans out, it will be thanks to persistent scepticism, not credulousness. Breakthroughs grow from scrutiny, not blind acceptance. And that's all for today. If you're excited about AI innovations and want to stay updated with the latest trends and insights, subscribe and turn on notifications. Remember, AI is not our enemy, but our ally, ushering us into a future of endless possibilities.